So you got yourself a resin printer. But where does it go? Something which is largely overlooked with resin printing, the location. Here's three main points to consider when choosing where to put the plastic summoning machine. And the last one, I haven't seen anyone else talk about. I did a poll recently, and this was the top reason people said they were subscribing. So... That should help bring in some views. Safety. The first mistake I've seen people make is just plonking their new printer just casually around the house. I am guilty of this myself when I first started printing, but I very quickly changed my tune. Now, do we like our family? What? No? Oh, okay. Well, do we like ourselves? No? Oh dear. You might need to work on that. Lungs. We like our lungs. They keep us alive, and we don't want to be inhaling toxic fumes. Studies have shown that exposure to these fumes can cause inflammation and irritation to the eyes, nose, and throat. Some VOCs found in 3D printing fumes like styrene, styrene, can you tell I can't read, slash are dyslexic, are classified as carcinogens, indicating a potential risk of cancer with long-term exposure. So, it's just not a gamble worth taking. Asbestos was great fun when it first came out. You used to be able to throw it at each other in the street. When I first made a mask for this channel, not this one, in fact, I'll get the one I'm talking about. I was so excited to use it, I put it on before priming it because I'm a genius and I got chemical burns. So yes, let's be careful around this stuff. Always use PPE and try and reduce your exposure to it wherever possible. Let's, let's, let's put you in the background to, to creepily watch over us, shall we? Why has it got a thousand eyes? I don't know. I don't know why I do a lot of things. I did try building an indoor enclosure, but these little air purifiers do nothing, and it sucked. My solution is having a shed. It would have been the garage, but that doesn't have a roof at the moment, thanks to my neighbour. Thanks, Steve, you- Sunlight. Avoid windows and doors. Any chance of UV light touching the printer could cause the resin in the vat to cure, which means a lot of scrapey scrapey no fun time for you. Although printers have a UV protective lid, that can't always be relied upon, and at some point you're going to take that lid off anyway, so it basically has no protection. Take Susan, for example. She's tucked away from the door, and just to be careful, she also has a cover over the top, and the vat itself also has a cover. However, if you do accidentally expose your resin to the great curing station in the sky, if you use heat, which could be hot water or a heat gun, then it will make scraping it a little bit less painful. Now on to temperature. Resin printers are fussy little creatures. Isn't that right, Susan? Yes, I need the right temperature to give birth without deformities. Ha, huh, don't we all? Generally speaking, most resins work well at about 30 to 35 degrees. And if you are like me and you have your printer out in the cold, this can be a little trickier. But we have a couple of tricks up our sleeve, don't we, Susan? Yes, daddy. Don't do that. For starters, when you're trying to keep a consistent temperature, I do find these enclosures really help. These are meant for growing plants, but they work just as well for printers. The company that makes this one is Cumgrow, but I'm sure any old ones will do. Unless they sponsor me, then these are the best. Then for heating, you can either use a very small mini space heater, or my preferred method, the fermentation belt, which has since been replaced by a better option, which I will explain in a minute. Luckily, Susan is a GK2, which means she has a self-heating system, so during a print, she's fine. However, when she isn't printing, we can come across another problem. Resin printers have an LCD screen, which can freeze and will break if frozen, which is expensive. But this can be prevented using a beer fermentation mat. My old trick was to use a beer fermentation belt, but I've upgraded to this because it comes with a temperature sensor and it can be programmed to come on only when it's needed to prevent the printer from going below zero degrees, which is all we need. We don't need it to be warm, we just need it to not be freezing. Now onto something which I don't think anyone talks about when it comes to finding a home for these things, space. This is a big one. I used to have a shed half the size of this and I have so many videos of me not having space and dropping things on the floor and knocking things over. And I also used to hurt my back a lot more as well because it was just awkward. You want a good desk to be able to do maintenance and process prints. It's worth the effort and cost whatever it may be. Being able to comfortably do printer related tasks is going to reduce a lot of stress. I've even got a chair in here for now for when I'm removing the supports. It's just it's so much nicer. To recap, the main points you're going to want to bear in mind when choosing a place for your brand new 3D resin printer is 1. Safety, keep it away from people, they don't need to breathe in the cancer fumes. 
Two, sunlight. Keep it away from sunlight. Treat it like a little vampire and you have a much easier time. Three, temperature. Make sure you have a way of keeping it warm, like the methods I stated, or any old thing will do just to avoid it freezing. And four, the biggest one for me, space. Make sure you can do what you want to do comfortably without stress. Now that you've got a good place to print it, check out how you can print this fabulous beast for free. I'll even show you how to do the supports.